morning, everybody. Welcome back. I think uh, I think this four-day break that I've had since the last time I made a video is the longest I've gone in over a year. <laughs> so, uh, had a great Christmas with the family, and uh, hope you guys did too. So, uh, we're back at it today here. We're going to keep working on this tractor. She still looks really good, nice and shined up from uh, what we did there, uh, when was that? Wednesday, last week. Um, but we're going to go over it again with uh, another polishing compound and then um, get our uh, ceramic coating put on. So hopefully we can get all that done today and I, we won't get it out of here, but we'll get close to being done with it today. Okay, so last week we were using this stuff. It's a Meguiar's Ultimate Compound and um, it worked pretty well. But you read the directions on here and you're supposed to use a, um, something a little more aggressive. So these are wool. Uh, buffing pads for our uh, Makita rotary buffer there. This one here I've got is uh, cotton. We could use that one too. That one's a little bit more of a polish than the wool ones are. Um, but for what we're doing here, we're using this ultimate polish. It's a little bit finer and just going to shine it a little bit better. Uh, and this one says to use foam. So I've got a foam pad here that I can use on that one. I've also got this uh, DA... Um, uh, random orbitable orbital uh, buffer there and I've got this foam thing bonnet for it but it's kind of falling apart I don't know if it's gonna work or not we're gonna start with this one and try it this is uh, not nearly as aggressive as that one is but it's a little more forgiving and stuff and, and should work well over some of the edges and curves and stuff that you got to be very careful not to burn through with that one on although the foam pad should work pretty good on either one so we'll see we might use them both I don't know so here's what we're starting with. It's pretty shiny. It does look good. There are a few scratches in it, but it's stuff that I don't think I'm really going to be able to take out. So I put a little bit of product on our uh, buffer here, and uh, we'll see. We'll see what we can do. Well, I don't think the difference is nearly as um, obvious visually from what I did on the other day to to this, but. I can feel it. This here is a lot smoother than over here where I haven't got yet. So, yeah, it's doing something. We're gonna we're gonna hit it. I don't know about this buffer. I may switch to my other one. Actually, I'll probably do this fender with this one. Do the other fender with the other one. And then we'll compare. All right. Well, I'm changing my mind here. I don't really like this stuff. It's um. It's incredibly difficult to get off, to wipe it off. I get I get this film on here that was not there when I started, but I can't get it off now. And I tried, I switched to this buffer on this side over here, and I, I, it's, I don't know if I gotta let this stuff dry before I wipe it off or what, but it's almost like it made swirls. And I know it's not in the paint it's or the finish, it's the compound that's on it, but I can't get it off. So we're not going to do that. I'm going to get my other rubbing compound back out. I'm going to switch pads back to probably put that cotton one back on. Redo these. And we're going to call it good. We're going to get ready for ceramic. <sighs> I tell you what. I can't make a decision. I changed my mind again. So I changed I changed pads. Put that cotton one on. And I thought, oh, I'm going to try this polish one more time. And it still doesn't come off. Can you guys see that? It just won't come off. But what I found out because it does feel better. When I do get it off, it feels a lot smoother than what I started with. Here's what I found out. If I get it wet, it comes right off. See that where I licked my finger and then... So, I'm just gonna get a wet, damp towel and rub everything off once I get done here, which I'm about done with these fenders. And that should make it shine up really good. And we'll get a towel and dry it if we have to. Well, I wiped that stuff off. Now everything's got a haze to it. I assume it's compound that I just haven't been able to get off quite yet or that I spread around because it kind of wipes off with my finger. So I've got to rub everything down with rubbing alcohol before we put our um, that ceramic coating on. So I think what I'll do is I'll get a rag with some rubbing alcohol on it and wipe that fender in that area and see what it looks like. 
And if that cleans it up, then good. If not, then we're either gonna have to wash it or I don't know. All right. Well, here's what I can tell you about these. This one, awesome. Worked really, really well. This one, NFG. Don't like it at all. Okay, I cleaned off my bench here, so we got a nice clean surface to work off of. This is what we're putting on that tractor coating. It's called Armor Shield 9 Nano Ceramic Coating. Avalon Kings is the company that makes it. Comes in a fancy box here. This one I've already had open, but haven't used much of. Um, little teeny tiny bottle like this that is super expensive, but it goes much, much farther than I thought it would. So that's all right. So a little bottle like this, and it also comes with a towel to wipe it off. Comes with some gloves for applying it with a little applicator pad and a little foam applicator sponge to wrap that towel around there like that. And then you get your sticker to put on that says, hey, I used ceramic coating on this, which I don't do, and directions. Um, I'll browse through them again, but basically you take this towel, wrap it around this pad, drop a few drops of this stuff on there, and then you wipe it um, across the tractor and then across both directions. Let it set for a couple of minutes and then wipe it off with this towel and um, then you're done. You guys wanna see what this stuff does? So this is that applicator that I used last year. Watch this. Dry. Just rolls right off of it. I was gonna wash it off so I have another one to use if I needed it. I was supposed to do that. <laughs> Pretty cool, but not super helpful right now. Wow. Maybe that edge didn't get as much? That's crazy. Yeah, over here where there wasn't quite as much it soaked in, but right there. It's also kind of stiff, as you can see. It doesn't want to bend. Maybe some soap. Well, the soap got it wet, but look at this. Even this terry cloth towel, microfiber, whatever you want to call it. Wow. Like, I, this was just used to wipe the excess off of two tractors last year. Maybe even just one tractor. Like, I can literally use it as a cup. Beads right off. Crazy. So kind of the next step here is to um, wipe everything down with our rubbing alcohol. And I just did the front of this fender and well, it's turning green. So we're getting some stuff off of it and some contaminants. I think it's cleaning it up pretty well uh, enough that, that we'll be all right. It does leave it just a little bit dull looking, but that's gonna happen. And when we put our ceramic coating on, it'll shine it right back up. I remember this from last year and thinking when I put that uh, rubbing alcohol on it that it, didn't look good enough, but when I put the ceramic coat on it, it made it pop, so. Okay, I've got the fenders all cleaned off. They're shiny, they look pretty good. Now, let's put a ceramic coat on them and make them really pop. Okay, so this comes with three of these little applicator pads here. I've got one, we wrapped it around our foam block. I'm gonna open that up, shake it up real good, and we'll put a few drops on, and then we'll go apply it. Shake it up real good. All right, I'm gonna let you guys watch from up there. Okay, 
I got that whole area covered pretty well. It says to give it between one and five minutes to dry, depending on your temperature in here for 60, 65, 70 degrees, it's two to three minutes. So we'll give it two to three minutes. Okay, now we'll take our other cloth and kind of buff it off. Yeah, I did a nice job. I assume you guys can see it. Yeah, clearly, you can see the line right there. This one's a little more evident. So, we're gonna go through, finish this one, then we'll do that one, and we'll work on the hood there this afternoon. All right, well, I am just finishing up the second fender here. It, uh, it looks really good. I'm quite happy with it. There are scratches and stuff that we didn't get out, um, but that's why you do the best you can to get the paint perfect before you put this stuff on, because this isn't gonna cover that up. It's not gonna take scratches out it's not gonna it's just gonna seal them in basically but this has got a really nice feel to it it's got a uh, really good shine and uh, it'll protect it really well so I have gotten this question several times already and uh, if you guys watched my videos last winter you know I did a couple of tractors with this stuff last year so I have a little bit of experience with it um, and I get the question frequently of how does it hold up? How, how, you know, is it worth the extra money for this over wax? And there are a couple of things that I like about this product over wax. And probably any ceramic is this way. This is just the one that I happened to try first. I got it last year on a Black Friday sale for like a third of the normal list price. So it's super expensive if you just go online and look at what the list price on it is. Don't buy that unless you can get it on sale. Um, there's plenty of other options and products, but what I like about it is one It goes on so much easier and faster than wax. I mean you guys saw me you just wipe it both directions Which is not hard to do and then lightly buff it off You don't have to rub the wax off really hard like we were doing on the combine It doesn't take near as long to apply so I really like that aspect of it and as far as durability and how it holds up um, When we get the tractors in the shop that we put this on last year and we start cleaning them up i'll be able to give you a lot better review on it and stuff but um i do know when i would kind of rinse them off throughout the year the water was still beating up on them and it, it did a really good job of retaining that hydrophobic principle or property you know where it, it really um beads the water up and do, it doesn't let it stick and it rinses dirt and stuff we get bird poop on the hoods or whatever it would it would just rinse right off with water instead of having to uh, really spray it or scrub it or get a soapy water or whatever. So I do like it. It works pretty good. The one thing that I did not like on it was on my uh, plant tractor, the 8R, I did a windshield and a strip, strip down one of the side windows. And I quickly figured out that it kind of attracts dust. Uh, the dust stuck to those spots where I put it on on the windows worse than the spots where I just use regular Windex. So that's a negative and I won't be putting it on windshields and windows anymore but as far as fenders and sheet metal and stuff even if for no other reason then it's easier to put on and take off than wax that's why i'm going to keep using this stuff now supposedly this stuff is good for five years and you only have to apply it once every five years i don't know if i'm buying that but here's what i decided instead of putting another coat of that stuff on the tractors uh, that we put it on last year again i bought this stuff uh, somebody recommended this to me from watching my videos, so thank you. Um, but it is a ceramic wax, which it's not really a wax. It's a ceramic coating. They just use wax because that's what people know. Um, but it's a spray-on. You just spray it on and wipe it off. should be a little bit faster and easier to, to apply. It's not as good of quality as this stuff is. There's no way, no how, um, and it's quite a bit cheaper. But this SiO2 is the silicate oxide, silicate dioxide yeah that you need to make it to call it a ceramic coating uh this one is like 80 or 85 percent sio2 this is maybe like five maybe so the concentration's not there but um 
So on my on my 8R and on the 8430 that we put the ceramic on last year, that's my plan is just to spray it with that stuff and wipe it on and off. It should still be really easy to apply. Give it a little refresher coat that'll be good for a year to year after we've got a good base coat on there. I don't know if that's right or not. That's what I'm going to do. So once we've got this stuff applied, um, it, you know, you, you kind of put it on and you give it a minute or two and then you wipe it off. Uh, it then says it needs two to four hours to kind of cure to the touch, but it needs upwards of 48 hours to really be cured and four to seven days before you get it wet if you can do it and expose it to the elements and weather. Fortunately, this tractor is going to have about four months before it needs to do anything. Um, so we're going to get it applied. We'll leave it set in here overnight to get it relatively cured, uh, finish whatever else we got to do to the tractor. We got to wash windows, clean the cab out, that kind of stuff. And then we'll stick it in the barn out back. It will get dusty out there, but, um, should be able to cure just fine. And then when we need to get it out in the spring, a quick rinse with the hose and then the water will all beat off and it'll be nice and clean. After lunch, we do the hood. All right, I am back. Uh, I spent a little bit of time here after I got back trying to set up some appointments. Tomorrow I was I'm planning in and still hoping to uh, go and do some seed business stuff. I've been working on some of these dairy farms with some of this Enogen corn uh, for the feed. And so I was trying to get some appointments set up. My uh, Enogen lead is coming up tomorrow to go see some guys with me. So anyway, working on that. Uh, time to do this hood. I'm going to wipe it down first just with a, a regular cloth and then we'll do our rubbing alcohol because... I haven't really touched it since last Wednesday, so I'm sure it's got dust and stuff on it. And I saw some spots earlier that I didn't quite get all of the uh, polish off. Oh, like right, right there from uh, what we were doing last week. One thing about this tractor, on these this side of the hood up here, right next to these tires, we've got a lot of little chips. I don't know if you can see them real well. Um... Not much I can do about them without getting some touch-up paint and doing a lot, and quite frankly, it's not worth the effort right now. So we're not gonna fix those, but yeah, there are a lot of them. <sighs> it's just the nature of having a tire throwing stones and dirt and mud right next to your painted surfaces. It's just the way it is. Okay, I've got her wiped down with the Rubbing alcohol now. We're ready for our ceramic on the hood. Well, what do we think? I think it looks pretty dang good. Nice shine. Should be protected quite well. So, hood's done. Rear fenders are done. The only other thing I had thought about doing was these. Um, but they are colored plastic. So i got to figure out what exactly to do with those. Um, I don't know that my rubbing compounds and stuff will work on plastic like it does on paint. So we've got some swirl marks and stuff here. Um, I don't know. I'm going to see about those. I might put that ceramic on them or read about it a little bit more. See exactly what it says about different materials. I know it's okay on glass and stuff. So I assume it will work on those, but I'll have to look into it a little bit more. we got to wash windows. We've got to clean the inside of the cab up a little bit more. Um, but yeah, we're about done here. Well, it doesn't give me much other than that it's recommended for layering. Of course it is. Might as well put multiple coats on. That way you use more product. Paint, wheels, rims, glass, and lights. Now, lights are generally plastic. Polycarbonate. Meh. Okay. Well, we're going to see what we can do on these uh, cab quarter panel covers by hand with our compound. I'm not going to use the uh, rotary buffer because it'll fling it all over my rear fenders, and we aren't going to do that after I just got them all ceramic coated. So um, we'll see what we can do by hand. Maybe we can get some of the swirls and scratches and scuffs out of it. Maybe we can't. And then I think we are going to put that ceramic coating on them just because. It doesn't say I can't, so why not? Let's we'll see what happens. Well, I'm a little surprised. That actually did better than I thought it was going to. It didn't get all the scratches out scuffs you can still see them but it certainly got rid of some some surface contamination and 
made it shiny, cleaner. That's good. I'm actually pretty impressed here. When I get done wiping this off, I will step back and show you better, but it, it did pretty well on this plastic. Both the compound and the ceramic coating. Yeah, I mean, it's not perfect, but it did a pretty good job. This side I haven't done yet, and you can still see. It's, it's it, yeah, it's better. I don't know how well the camera picks all this stuff up, but anyway. Okay, well, I got those pieces done. Um, I've got just a couple of other small pieces, like that one that got pushed out of the way and hasn't been cleaned up yet. We gotta, we gotta get that cleaned up, and I wanna put a ceramic on it. And then there's a couple that fit in there. Those two that we wanna do as well. Um, so we'll get to those. Uh, I wanna go out and check our parts shed, see if my lights for that tractor showed up yet. Aha, uh -huh, they have. Looks fancy. Cool. Well, they ought to work. Weird. Oh, there's no plug on this end. Interesting. All right. All right, so I've been looking this light over a little bit. I was expecting these wires to have a plug on it. In fact, I was expecting them to have the plug that mates to, to this, like this plug here. So then I thought, well, maybe I can just use this, but I won't be able to get these wires through that bolt very easily. I was trying to take one of the ends apart, but I couldn't get it. But then I thought, well, I don't really even need to do that. All I need is to put an end on here. The problem was the, this end mates to this one, which then this is what plugs into the tractor. So what I really need is one of these on the end of these wires. And it just so happens that I have a couple of those housings. All I need is the pins. I've got these that are used that, I mean, I could solder them on there or crimp them together, but um, if I can just get some of these ends, put them on the end of these wires, I can eliminate all of those extra wire harnesses. So I'm going to try and do that. I got a buddy that's got an electrical connections kit stuff that he might have them. Otherwise I can get them. Those ends will cost me like 50 cents for four of them. So, um, we'll delay our project a little bit longer, but that's okay. It'll be a lot cleaner installation than trying to, cause I gotta, I gotta put ends on these wires one way or another. And it doesn't make sense to go through four connections when I can just do it in one. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. For the record, here is the parts picture of what I thought I was ordering. And there is clearly a plug on the end of those wires in the picture. And then you need the two to adapt it to the right. Whatever. I'll, I'll fix it. We'll make it work. Okay, I got those two pieces cleaned up. But I want to put them back on the tractor before I hit them with that ceramic. So um, I was just pulling the tractor head. So I got room to wash that piece back there. And I... Almost. I almost crushed the ladder. Still good. Ha, ah, I just got another dealer for or delivery from my John Deere dealer. Uh, this little computer box may look familiar to you. This is a uh, MGT, Modular Telematics Gateway. We put one of these in the 8R, upgraded that one last spring, or early summer, spring, somewhere in there. Um, to take that one from a 2G to a 4G. Uh, he told me, my salesman told me a couple weeks ago that John Deere is phasing out the 3G uh, MGTs uh, that are in some of the equipment. This tractor has a 3G MGT, so does the combine. Um, but they're going to be good for another year and a half or two years or something like that, but they are phasing them out. So they have a program right now to upgrade them and, um, uh, yeah, upgrade to the 4G ones. For like 150 bucks so i said yeah give me one of them i'll do this tractor so he dropped that off we're gonna get that installed probably maybe tomorrow maybe wednesday we'll see what time how much time i have to work on stuff but uh, uh so he brought that by what that thing does is wirelessly send the data from our displays that are in the corner post there uh, up to the my john deere account to 
sync. Yeah, it, it basically allows it to uh, transfer data wirelessly. So uh, on this tractor, it's not real critical. It's a tillage tractor. I, I don't really need coverage maps and tillage maps and stuff, but it'll do it. And for 150 bucks, yeah, why not? Plus it comes with three years or five years of the subscription that you need to be able to do it. So um, we'll, we'll take that. All right, this is the last piece that I need to get shined up. So I'm gonna hand, go over it with the rubbing compound. And then we'll put it, our, put it back on the tractor and put our ceramic on it. Okay, well, I got that cover plate put back on. I ceramic coated it. It's just as shiny as everything else is now. Everything looks good on this tractor. I'm quite happy with it. So tomorrow, I don't know what's going on tomorrow. I do know what's going on. I don't know how much time I'm gonna have around here for stuff tomorrow. But next things to this tractor, what we've got left to do is wash the windows, clean the inside of the cab up, wipe stuff down. And uh, I've got some, some stuff that I like to spray on the plastic, black plastic the tanks to help clean them up, shine them up, protect them a little bit. So we'll do that. And uh, then we're pretty well done with, oh yeah, and then replace this MGT. Uh, and then we're pretty well done with this tractor. We'll work on our lights as soon as I get some pins on that tractor. So those are the next things here. Hopefully we can get all those things done this week and get these two relatively out of here. Uh, be ready for new tractor after the first of the year. So it is after five o'clock, I am heading home. Um, tomorrow I'm either gonna be working in here a little bit or I've gotta do a little bit of seed stuff like I was saying earlier. I've got some uh, at least an appointment set up and hopefully we'll find a couple other guys to go and see but uh, my Enigen lead account specialist, whatever she's, her title is, is coming up to go and uh, see these guys with me. So hopefully we'll have a good day selling some Enigen uh, feed corn and uh, we'll see how all that goes. So um, I will be around Wednesday. Uh, if I don't do anything tomorrow around here, I'll, I will Wednesday. And then I'm planning on working Thursday morning. Thursday is New Year's Eve, so uh, it will be a short day and then I won't be around on Friday. I did start working on my year in review video. Sorry I didn't get that done for this weekend, but I was busy with, you know, Christmas stuff. So um, I will have it for New Year's weekend probably. And uh, we'll get, get that put out. So anyway, have a great night night right yeah gosh i gotta get back into the swing of things here it's been a long time since i've done this sorry so um questions comments leave them down below hit that like and subscribe button for me please and uh we'll see you guys again probably tomorrow